It's Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. It's brought to you today by the Gallery Bar, Book, and Games, Ocean Casino Resort. All football season, catch us there every Monday. Go to the Gallery at Ocean Casino Resort and go for the win. For more info, visit theoceanac.com. You must be 21 old to play. Gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Can the Eagles clinch a playoff spot this week? We'll tell you how, plus we'll take a look back at their Week 13 win over the Titans. Who stood out? What stood out? And, of course, the Inside the Birds power rankings are back with Adam Kaplan, who is here on the Sports Bash live on 97.3 ESPN for another edition of Football at Four. What's going on, Adam? Michael, good to talk to you, my friend, here on a Tuesday. Week number 14, yes, the Eagles could clinch a playoff spot this week if they win or the Niners lose to the Bucks and the Seahawks lose to the Panthers. But they could take care of business of winning at MetLife Stadium over the Giants this week, and they'll get in, which is week 14, of course, of 18 weeks of the 17-game schedule. So you got that on, on uh, the docket. Uh, you got some roster moves. Eagles made a bunch of minor roster moves in the last minute. Robert Quinn to IR with the knee injury. He has not looked right since they since they acquired him in that trade for a fourth-round pick. And they made a, a bunch of minor practice squad moves. Three guys out, one guy. Uh, Janoris Robinson activated off of IR, who's a DN, who replaced Robert Quinn in the rotation at the back of it, even if he dresses. And that's pretty much it as we head into Giants week. Yeah, we'll take a look at them in a minute here. But this is, uh, you know, all these games. We look back at the Titans game. We'll do that in a minute. We talk about they can clinch. But, man, they got to continue to pile up wins because if they lose another game and then lost to Dallas in week 16, Dallas would get tiebreakers over them. So they they still have to keep piling up the wins here. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting you said that because I was just talking to someone with the Eagles about that uh, earlier today some from the business end, and we were just talking, just catching up, and he said, man, why does Minnesota keep winning? I was like, yeah, in this long, in this two-month period where they've been playing great football, all of their wins have been by eight points or less. It's just, that's kind of, at least they win close games, but clearly the Eagles are better than Minnesota. The Eagles obviously have the tiebreaker over them, and Eagles already beat Dallas, uh, but there's just certain things that would have to happen, strength of victory, uh, record of common opponents, that would play in if they want up being tied, but we're a ways away from that. It's really it's NFC NFL East NFC East week, and by the way, Eagles playing three straight games on the road. Yeah, they'll be at the uh, Bears next week, and then of course that game against Dallas on uh, Christmas Eve. And we know um, uh, before we look at this game, you got Philly, you got Dallas, Minnesota, San Francisco. Uh, how, where are you on Minnesota and San Francisco? Yeah, so if you look at my power rankings, right, we might as well go there since you set it up that way. Like, the Vikings, look, they're a good football team. Their secondary's not very good. The Eagles know that. The, if, the way you beat the Vikings is you throw it, and that's that's shown to be the case. They've had a good schedule. Uh, as you mentioned, Dallas absolutely annihilated, just crushed them. But what happened by 37? But remember, that was the game where the week before they had an emotional win in Buffalo and they had nothing left and they got smoked at home. That's not a surprise that they get blown out, but not, not by 37. That's a little crazy, but anyway, uh, so we've got it. Eagles one chiefs two. Now the Eagles at one. Why look, they, that was a decisive win. It was the first, their most complete game all season. Why we'll get to, we'll, we'll, we'll break down the Eagles in a minute in terms of the Tennessee game, but again, all three phases, Kansas City, there's something missing from their passing game. I know their numbers are still pretty good. Mahomes is having a great season, but not having Tyree Kill, who who absolutely tilt cover, he tilts coverage like we wrote today, that's a problem, and that that's a big difference. Yeah, we'll get into uh, the rest of your uh, power rankings in just a minute here, but first yeah. I want to get some thoughts on Week 13 because this was a game that many people were concerned about. A lot of people thought the physicality of the Titans – would be a problem. The way they run the ball, Philadelphia had kind of felt the last couple of weeks that they could be had, but who was the more physical team in Week 13? You know, Mike, I I, I, uh, I I felt this way coming in. It would be what we call a coach's game. That's a, that's a coaching term that I've learned over the years from talking to coaches. There's some weeks where the coaches have to kind of take over and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to set the tone, and this is the way we're going to play. And that's exactly what they happened. You set it up very well with the physical play. They were so physical on defense in the front seven, not just their 5-2 front, which they ran, which 
you know, anyone who follows the Eagles knows, or follows them closely knows that this is their primary front. There are 34 defenses placed to whoever hangs and plays with two linebackers. But their, their front, in layman's terms, is a 5-2. And that that's what they came in running, and they were super physical, and their DBs tackled really well. They It's the first game where they really had their corners up and being physical. And clearly, this is where the coaches, they made this decision. This is going to happen. And it was also a player's execution game, and I thought they did that very well. And my, it doesn't show because they didn't run very much. But when they ran it, they ran it very hard. And inside, Miles Sanders ran very physical in this game. I know the yardage per carry wasn't what people were looking for. Who cares? They were able to sustain the offense. It was about the passing game. And I got to tell you, it was so obvious, like, within the first three minutes what they were doing. They are like, running the football. Why would you run the football against this team? They throw it, and they were relentless. 13 plays of 10 yards or more in the passing game. Uh, that were completed, and that was that was one of the most aggressive games of the season. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people talking about one week they run for over 350 yards, the next week they throw for over 350 yards. But yeah, but the lack of that they didn't run the ball barely at all in the game they against Tennessee. To. They just threw the ball. So this was a game that kind of showed we could beat you in one way, and then the very next week we could do it in another way. Yeah. So let me go back to Green Bay real quick. I. I don't believe it was their plan to run it as much as they did, but because Green Bay laid down against them, uh, they they just simply were not there mentally. It just made sense to stay with it. Like no team, particularly the Eagles, the, this, the Eagles are not the Titans running the football. They're not. The Eagles are more of a passing team. But there have been a couple, ga- two or three games this season where the other team simply cannot stop them running it. So like, all right, you know, this isn't what we were planning to do, but you know what? It's working so well. Why change it? This game was very clear. The weather was great. It was in low 40s, but the wind was very light at, at the link, and they had a plan. Their plan was obvious. This wasn't just at the start of the game where it was working. It was very clear to me that they were going to come in passing, and they were relentless. And And the pass protection was was just ridiculous, Mike. It, that's a great front that the Titans have, and they, they made him look like a college defense. Yeah, I mean, and look, by the way, as sloppy as they were with, you know, their <laughs> offensive line, all those yeah. pre-snap penalties, they still had a monster day offensively. I mean, that could have very much been a factor in the game. It was not. Twelve. Tw- think about it. Twelve accepted penalties, and as Greg Olson said during the game, it seemed like a hundred. It, it was really crazy. And, and remember, it was the first play of the game. And as uh, Sirianni said in his press conference, everybody was a culprit. Now he he obviously is going to take the heat on that, and that's that. You know, I, I credit him for taking res- responsibility. And I could imagine Jeff Stallen. They were showing him during the game. Like I, I, I would think he would knowing him a little bit in the way he coaches. I'm sure he went off on his players a little bit because that that it, that was absurd. This is not like them. And I'm sure it's all going to be corrected. It's obvious in tape study. It's nothing. It's not a big deal. But they scored what 35 points. Mm-hmm. And as I said to someone uh, after the game, I'm like. I was like, you guys, I said to someone with the Eagles, I was like, you guys could have scored 50 easily if the game had been close. Yeah. The, the, the Titans, who have a good secondary, by the way, had no answer. It was it was pretty interesting how how relentless the coaches were at, at Stike and calling the plays. They're like, they're not stopping us. It was kind of like the Green Bay game, but in the passing, you're not going to stop us, so we're going to continue to throw it. Yeah, and uh, they, look, I thought, you know, they scored 40 last week. They scored 35 this week, and they're doing it without Dallas Goddard. It seems yep. that this offense um, is is finding their way as as we're getting to the back end of the season here. It'll be interesting to see um, when Goddard comes back how they kind of implement it, him because they got the two tight ends involved a little bit in the game, Calcaterra and Jack Stoll. Well, implemented. He's taken over, and there's nobody else who got the football tight end. I mean, that's just the way it is, but uh, I, I, I would agree with you. Though four for sixty in this game, boy, did Jack Stoll. I, I, you know, I, I told people this uh, when the Eagles signed him as an undrafted free agent. He's a much better athlete than he's given credit for. In fact, he had a I'm told a pretty significant knee injury in his final year at Nebraska. Had fifth and sixth round grade from, from teams, but the knee injuries curtailed his last season there. He, he's running well. He could block. You know, he's doing a nice job, and that's good. And Calcaterra is super athletic. You no, know, it. But when when Goddard comes back, they're complete. I mean, that's 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 just the way it is. They're they're probably the most complete offense in football because the the Chiefs don't have Tyree Kill. If people don't think that's a factor, watch this last game. They they they're having problems occasionally in games where they're just Mahomes will, will hold on to the football, who will run because nobody's getting open. Andy Reid's still great at, at designing plays and scheming guys open, 
but not having Tyreek Hill is a factor. Yeah, uh, we're talking with Adam Kaplan inside the birds.com, the Inside the Birds podcast, and of course, football at four. Uh, one thing that we talked about last week was kind of uh, highlighted was their special teams. And it's easy to say, <laughs> well, they did a much better job. They were very good. What changed? Was there something that changed? Did they do something different? I'll give you one hint. Yeah, they did something different. They finally blocked well for the, the punt return of Covey, I'm told. it uh, He had much more room to grow. We got something I'm going to hold for tomorrow's show, which will surprise you on this. But I, I'm just telling you, they block much better. Uh, for In fact, they've not really blocked well. That, this is the thing about Covey. I know it looks like he's going through like, a, you know, like a, you know, just getting hit like crazy and going down like a sack of potatoes sometimes, Mike. But he, this is obviously his best game. In fact, two games ago, he looked really good. So, but this is his best game. And although he made a, he made at least one mistake in this game, he, he, he did very well. They blood this is the best block game they had for him. Boston Scott, by the way, Boston Scott's not a bad kickoff returner. He's okay. Now, next year, they got to address this. We had talked about, Mosher and I talked on Inside the Birds. This is a good point by Jeff, where the one area where Howie Roseman could have done a better job, you know, they not having a Chris Maragos or a Colt Anderson or some of these, or, or actually Brian Brayman, remember, they paid him really, he's one of the highest paid special teams players by the Eagles in the league for a couple of years. Yeah. But it was well worth it. And that's the thing that they don't have that veteran guy that, you know, I'd said on our show, the Eagles have one of the, the, the youngest coverage teams in the NFL, and it absolutely shows, but they were much more disciplined in this game. All right, Adam, the run game. They they held uh, Henry to under 40 yards. Yeah. Why were they able to shut the running game down? What did John Gannon's defense do? Yeah, so what happened is they dropped the, they dropped Epps in the box. They moved the corners up. They were, they, they, they were not concerned, particularly after Burks got the concussion on the touchdown. Uh, versus Josiah Scott, they were like, okay, he's out. They have nobody who can make a play or could run other than Chica Conquo, the tight end, only on like one catch. Like, all right, let's move everybody up. And they did. They plugged up every hole. And his, see, Henry is not like Barkley. He's not a big, he's one cut runner. He's not, he's not shifty. He, the, the thing that was interesting, Mike, is there were three or four plays in the game where they missed him uh, at the first level. But Edwards or somebody else would, would get him after four yards. So he just could not get loose. And they were very disciplined. You know, they did a great job. The coaches, again, this is a coach's game. This is probably the best coaching game that all their coaches did. You know, just offense, defense, and special teams. They did a great job. Uh, another thing they did a great job was, was getting to the quarterback. The pass yeah. rush was outstanding. And yeah. guess what? They didn't have to blitz to do it. You, you know, and I look, the, when you run a scheme like this, you don't need to – you simply don't need to do anything else. You don't blitz very much. In fact, their, their blitz number has dropped significantly in the last, like, four or five games. It's a, it's a five-man pressure, stunts, everything seemed to work. They knew they were going against a bad offensive line that it showed, and that's what you do. I mean, that's what you do. You don't have to blitz. This Fangio scheme – Vic Fangio is a Hall of Fame defensive coordinator. I know there's not – I know – there's not one for coordinators, but he's one of the best. He's known in NFL circles as being one of the best defensive coordinators in NFL history. He's phenomenal. He's, he's done great everywhere he's been. And the the guy's great, and they're running his scheme, their version of it. They're, they're never exactly the same, although he's helping out Gannon. But the fact of the matter is it it's working. The execution was just terrific. And they knew they knew what they can do. They knew they're going to get the left tackle, Dennis Daly. We talked about this on a pregame show from Rivers Casino. We said they're going to attack the left side. They were relentless there with with their with their um, with their their their, 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 their their just their alignment, the way that they did it, and they shifted their line a little bit. They just did a phenomenal job with their stunts. I mean, it was something to behold. And my gosh, Reddick. Asan Reddick was phenomenal. Obviously, Josh Sweat was. They met at the quarterback. It was actually kind of cool. And uh, look, this is a this is a dominant game. And quite frankly, they face another offensively challenged team this week against the Giants. Uh, all right, Adam Kaplan. Speaking of uh, challenged teams, let's challenge you to find uh, who you like in your inside the birds power rankings because uh, we had some interesting teams win, lose, and injuries this week, and how they might have affected. So let's run them down. All right, Eagles won at 11-1. They were number two the previous week. They were one. Chiefs were at one. They are two, as I explained earlier. Cowboys at three. They're the same. Vikings are at four, the same. 
Bills are at five. They're not playing great football. They're doing well enough. Their defense is getting healthier. The, Vi- the Vikings, the, the Bengals were the Niners for me from the AFC. They, we had them at eight last week. They're, they, they're, they're, on a, they're a nice winning streak here. They're finally healthy on defense. They're playing great football right now. And they're doing without Joe Mixon, the running back. The Niners, yep, Mike, you alluded to them. We kept them at seven. I mean, they had a, they had a great win against the Dolphins. I can't move them up because now they've lost their quarterback for the, the rest of the season. Brock Purdy is a Gardner Minshew type game manager, not a very good arm. Eventually, it's going to be a problem for them. Dolphins had a, they, they they got handled. They got manhandled. Uh, Baltimore barely won. Uh, it's going to be hard for Lamar J- for Lamar Jackson to play with a sprained knee this week. They're still at nine. Seahawks, good win last week against the Rams to come back and win. We moved them up from 13 to 10. They've been a great surprise. Eunice Smith in the running for MVP it has to be. Commanders tied. We have them at 11. Jets, bad loss, a tough loss. They're still at 12. Giants, we moved them up a little bit. They play, they play well despite their issues from 17 to 13. Titans, terrible loss. We went from 10 to 14. And Bucks, Bucks they won, but we could not move them up there at 15. Uh, real quick, a couple interesting notes on this. Uh, Tennessee fired their GM today. Uh, John yep. Robinson's been there for a while. Is that just, in your mind, difference of opinions? This thing has gotten as far as it could go. It's a weird day. De- hey, Tuesday, you're fired. Yeah, it's it's the timing of it because you don't – when it's – first of all, they're going to win in division. All right. the work has been done. Why would you – if you're going to fire the guy, which, which some people thought he might get fired around the league, uh, just some of the things – but his home runs are, are are like he's just Jeffrey Simmons. Great, but if you go through all his picks, it's been a good general manager. But his misses, unfortunately, kind of did him in. Um, and Mike Mike Vrabel is probably going to get more power. It's just the timing, and I know some people are pointing to now the owner Amy Adams drunk. It, it could have been an emotional thing after what AJ Brown did to them. I, I'm not I'm not ruling anything out at this point because you don't know what she's thinking. That it's hard to know. And Mike Vrabel, you know, is the head coach. By the way, John Robinson bought. Uh, brought Mike Vrabel in. Uh, the other interesting story of these teams, the GM I would least want to be is John Schneider in Seattle and have to make a decision on what to do with Geno yeah. Smith. Someone asked me, and I said, I'd pay him two years and, and, and $40 million, no more than that. They love the guy. I know the players love I know talking to Seahawks about Geno. They, they love Geno. The players especially are very close to him. Remember, they thought Drew Locke was going to beat out Geno Smith. So, I mean, anyone who followed that team closely knew that. But it didn't happen. And what a story. No, it's actually a great problem to have. The Eagles have a great problem with, with Jalen Hurts. It's not a problem in terms of extending his contract. It's how much how much fully guaranteed money it's signing. What's the APY? It's not easy. J- Jeff and I, Moshe and I, did a contract show a month ago. And he continues to get better. It's going to be fascinating. But as I've told people, not, they can't extend it anyway until the, the season's over. The playoffs will tell you a lot about what that contract will look like. And the, the, so. the last one, Adam, is you seem to be a lot higher on Minnesota than others are. Uh, like, I think if Cincinnati plays Minnesota, Cincinnati's better than them. I know they beat Buffalo at Buffalo, yeah. but I don't know that that way will ever happen again. I mean, Allen fumbling the ball the way he did exactly. in that spot. Um, but you like Minnesota in your top five. What I like about Minnesota is it's what – see – it all these wins by eight points or less. Look, that has to mean something. It, it, like that's amazing. That they can continue to win close games. I'm, I'm right there with Cincinnati, Mike. I've got them at six. I need to see a little bit more uh, from them. I want to see because t- before we get out of here, if you look at their schedule the rest of the way, I want to see what they do. Because look, they great win against Tennessee two weeks ago. Great winning over Kansas City. And they did. They got smoked at Cleveland. That was an aberration. I don't know what happened in that game. That was a, it's like a Sunday night game, or they got blown out there. They play Cleveland again, but they also still have to play Buffalo. Uh, by the way, the Bills do mm-hmm. have to play at New England. They also have to play Baltimore. So it's tight. It's definitely tight. I don't have a problem with what you said. You make a good argument, but I need to see a little bit more out of Cincinnati. Uh, by the way, uh, Baker Mayfield has signed with the Rams. He's actually claimed. Wasn't he claimed? Yes, waivers? waived. Claimed off waivers by the yeah. Rams. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, he, the Rams will inherit the $1.35 million on his contract, and he will yeah. be a Ram and could play on Thursday night against the Raiders, according to Adam Schefter. And, by the way, some news on Jimmy Garoppolo. He is a Liz, It's not a Liz Franck injury. He will not yeah. need surgery, and he could return 
in seven to eight weeks if uh, they are yeah, still so, alive. Yeah, so basically what Kyle Shanahan said yesterday is they confirmed it through the MRIs that through the MRI that there was not Liz Franck, which had knocked him out to the spring. So, yeah. Now, here's the problem, though, okay? For the next two months, most likely, it's going to be Brock Purdy or Josh Johnson, or and they could also bring another quarterback in. Josh Johnson is only there because he, he's with them and he knows this, the offensive scheme. You can't win without a quarterback. This is not the year. Remember when the, the, the Ravens wouldn't let, let Trent Dilfer throw? Those days are over. You have to throw the football. Their defense is great, by the way. Their defense is phenomenal. Yeah. But you can't win with just defense these days. you got to be able to throw the football. All right. Uh, there you go. Inside the Birds uh, has their – uh, podcast, of course. You can check out the website, the pregame show, the postgame show, and uh, you just heard there inside the birds power rankings from Adam Kaplan here on Football at Four on Tuesdays on the Sports Bash. All right, Adam, appreciate it, but we'll talk to you on Friday. You got it. Thank you. All right, he's back on Friday for Football at Four.